Thank you and welcome back. Our next speaker is Associate Professor Sharon Newnham, Director of the System Safety Team at the Monash University Accident Research Centre. Sharon has published widely in the area of workplace safety from a systems thinking perspective. She's a prolific author and has published work in a variety of academic and media outlets. She's an Associate Editor of the leading safety journal, Safety Science. And Sharon was invited by the Transportation Research Board to be an international national member of the Truck and Base Bus Safety and is chair of the subcommittee in safety management. Sharon, welcome. Thank you very much for having me here today. Okay, I'm really excited to present uh, the findings of the, this project. I'll jump straight into the slides. So the patient handling Injuries Review of Systems project was funded by WorkSafe in 2018. The goal of the project was to develop a tool to help guide manual handling coordinators conduct systems thinking, review and revision of risk controls following the report of a, a patient handling injury. So the tool itself was developed in collaboration with Monash University Accident Research Centre, where I'm from, the Centre for Human Factors and Socio-Technical Systems at the University of the Sunshine Coast, uh, WorkSafe Victoria, and in particular, the Victorian Public Health Service played a critical role in the co-design of this, of this tool. Now, the goal of FIRES is to provide health services in Victoria and broader now too, with a standardised process for reviewing and revising risk controls following the report of an injury to staff in a hospital setting, and we're extending that to aged care now. The purpose of the fires is to improve compliance with Regulation 281C, optimise risk controls used to prevent future patient handling injuries, optimise the allocation of resources, uh, to control risks associated with patient handling across Victorian health services. And the last one there is to prove collabor collaboration across all levels of the system. The, the unique aspect of this tool is that it's underpinned by a systems thinking accident analysis method, Rasmussen's AxiMap and uh, Rasmussen's risk management framework and the AxiMap technique and is also based on WorkSafe Victoria's guidance material on the review and revision of risk controls. So you can see here on the right-hand side, we derive five principles from Rasmussen's risk management framework to improve work systems to reduce the risk of injury to staff. And, and these principles underpin the development of the tool itself. So the first one is there is a need to focus at the fact at the higher levels of the system rather than just focusing on the behaviour of staff or changes to equipment. There is a need to improve interaction between all components of the system. There is also a need to improve the flow of communication up and down levels of the system. There is a need to make the system more resilient to people performing tasks in their own way and becoming more efficient over time. And finally, the last one, work systems need to have good processes in place for monitoring the implementation of risk controls. So there is five steps, six steps in the development of the fires investigation, and I'll go through those steps briefly. So when a report is made from by an injured staff member, the first step is to actually summarise the incident. And that involves summarising outcomes, outcomes of the injury to staff, the current risk controls and any response prior to review. Step two involves relevant stakeholder consultation across all levels of the system. Step three involves identifying the factors contributing to the incident, why the risk controls were ineffective and whether better practice risk controls were available. Step four is where the AxiMap technique technique comes into it and it creates that visual representation of all the factors contributing to the incident under review that were identified in step three. Step five is about involving the review and revision of risk controls internal to the health service, where step six is about looking at recommendations for external stakeholders to improve risk controls to prevent patient handling injuries. 
So external stakeholders, I'm particularly referring to regulators and, and relevant government bodies. So in terms of the implementation of the fires here in Victoria, uh, it, this actually involved a, first of all, training in the actual um, systems thinking and use of the tool. So this involved a two hour webinar on systems thinking and the model and method used to develop the tool itself. There was a four hour workshop on systems thinking. We really focused on communication style within the workshop too. That was important in regards to step two in identifying relevant stakeholders and how to communicate effectively to essentially piece together all of those pieces of the puzzle that need to be, uh, need to be captured to create a systems thinking review and revision of the risk controls. There was follow-up coaching and consultation following the completion of the first report. So we gave feedback on the, all, all of the steps within the FIRES tool. And there was technical support throughout implementation of the FIRES, particularly in the development of the AXI maps as well, which we use an on online program called Lucid Charts for this. So the participants within the implementation trial of the FIRES were asked to complete a minimum of five reports using the FIRES. And that was undertaken from July to December in 2019. So 16 occupational health and safety officers from 10 health services in Victoria were trained in the fires. So they received the training in the webinar and the workshop. And the majority of these were metropolitan based. There was some attrition over time because of the length of the project. Um, this was due to individuals changing job roles. So I'm just going to prov provide some uh, information regarding the, the findings of the fires. So this actually presents the risk management framework as I presented earlier. So you can see the five levels of the system here going from equipment and surrounding environments, the lower level here, to government regulators and external influences at the higher levels. And essentially what this figure is representing is all of the factors that were aggregate, aggregated across those health services participating in the implementation of the fires over that time period. So we were able to aggregate all of those factors, which was step three of the, the fires tool. So this presents essentially the summation of all the factors contributing to patient handling injuries as identified in the fires review was implemented here within Victoria. So essentially this data shows that the complex system of factors contributing to patient handling injuries. And this is really evidenced by the percentage of factors identified at each of the levels of the system. As you'll see that 11% of factors were identified at equipment and surrounding environments. And up to there was 9% of the factors were identified at government regulators and external influences level. There was evidence from the findings here that it, the fires guided coordinators in a systems thinking review of incidents. And this is really evidenced by the identification of contributing factors at operations management level, which is 24%, the governance and administration level at 17%, and 9% at government regulators and external influences. So why this finding is so unique is the traditional investigation tools tend to prompt the investigation of contributing factors at the lower levels of the system, the equipment and surrounding environments, frontline staff, and some at the operations management level. Yet there's, there's, there's very, very little uh, guidance out there in terms of identifying factors at these higher levels of the system. So this is how we came to the conclusion that provided a systems thinking approach and evidence of that to an investigation of, of incidents. So this next slide is incredibly complex and messy and I don't expect anyone to be able to, to read uh, the, all of the, the different boxes, but essentially why I present this particular graph is to show how complex the system is. As I just mentioned before, Traditional investigations typically focus at these two lower levels of the system, which essentially means that actions generated from these reviews then again also focus on these levels of the system, which result in training to staff or changes to equipment. Uh, 
this shows how complex it is and why we need to understand the factors contributing to patient handling injuries at these higher levels of the system. So you can see the number of the, the factors that are represented within the boxes that have been identified through the reviews, but you'll also see the relationship between factors. And as I mentioned previously, in regards to the principles underlying the FIRES tool, is that the flow of information and the relationship between factors in the system is incredibly important in being able to identify actions that are gonna create systemic change. And this illustrates why we need to identify actions capable of creating systemic change and as represented through the arrows within the system. So this figure provides an aggregate AXI map from one of the health services that undertook 13 reviews using the FIRES tool. So it's an aggregate here. So it's essentially um, what I want to present is, um, or the message I want to get across is how complex the system of factors contributing to patient handling injuries and the multiple interacting factors within and across different levels of the system. Now in step five and step six of the toolkit, it's about generating actions. And these actions are, are, are based on review of the AXI map itself. So again, we looked at aggregating those actions across these five levels of the system again. So this figure presents the summation of the key themes that emerging from the actions generated in the FIRES reviews. So as you'll see here, the highest proportions of act actions identified the review and revision of controls at the operations management level. And this was through strategies such as safety culture, review of rostered hours and staff breaks. There was also a large number of actions generated at the governance and administration level, as you see by 27% here, and included strategies like creating a safety culture and introducing a KPI for staff safety. So the majority of these actions also um, targeted stakeholders internal to the health services, such as managers, directors, nurse unit managers. So the actions weren't only focused on occupational health and safety officers or the Department of Occupational Health and Safety within the, the health service. It, and that is exactly what we wanted to do in terms of presenting a systems thinking approach within this is to extend the or share the responsibility of safety across the system. So again, this, the actions generated um, suggests that the fires help facilitate a shift away from frontline worker and towards high managerial um, levels when developing risk controls. It was also great to see that a smaller percentage of actions involved the review and revision of equipment and those just focused on the frontline level. So that was more evidence that it, it helped provide that systems thinking approach in this project, we also undertook an evaluation of the fires uh, in terms of uh, understanding the user experience. So effectiveness in the implementation of fires was evaluated and we found that coordinators strongly agreed there was value in using the fires. They support using the fires in their future work. They believe that it could be easily integrated within their existing work practices and that the feedback could be used to improve fires in the, in the future, which is exactly what we um, aim to do and have done since uh, uh, analyzing the results from this implementation trial. We also uh, got some qualitative feedback collected at the completion of the fires. And as you'll see from these comments here, uh, the participants overall, they believe that the fires provided a more comprehensive approach to investigating patient handling injuries. So in conclusion, we found from the implementation of the fires that it helped coordinators to, to think in systems. And this was really evidenced by identification of contributing factors at the operations management level and above and actions targeting systemic change in healthcare. And that was illustrated through the aggregation of actions, the key themes in those actions. 
There was also positive support for the effectiveness of the fires, and this was identified through the evaluation itself. The coordinators believed it was a highly valuable tool for investigating patient handling injuries. They said that with the first review, it took them about one and a half to two hours to complete the review because it's prompting investigation of factors at those higher levels of the system. So factors that you wouldn't have previously considered using more traditional approach to investigation. So it did take an additional amount of time to complete the investigations. However, they found that after they became more expert by the end of the, the implementation trial, that they were completing the reviews in less than one hour. So it was definitely an experience thing that, that contributed to, to the longer length of time to start with. But then when, um, and the other bit of feedback in terms of, of, of um, timing was the development of the AXI map itself, which brings me on to the next steps and where this, where this has gone to um, from here. So from the evaluation and the feedback from the fires, the, this stage essentially said that there was extremely positive and insight from the data and it's also been used, this data, to inform activities within WorkSafe, such as inspector training and guidance material. So at the beginning and the middle of last year, WorkSafe has announced um, to extend funding to support the development of a software tool to support, to support implementation of the fires where it's not fires anymore. We've now referred to this app-based version as STIR, Systems Thinking in Review. So it's going beyond patient handling injuries and looking to investigate all workplace um, injuries within healthcare and aged care. So there's also going to be with, within this tool, the capability that will automatically generate that AXI map, which is coming back to the feedback, that was one factor that contributed to the, the time taken to complete the review because the development of the AXI map in the Lucid chart program is quite time intensive. Very informative and educational and best understanding the all of the factors and relationship between factors, but at the same time, very time intensive. We know occupational health and safety officers within healthcare um, don't have the luxury of a lot of time to be taken uh, to, to um, software tools like this. So this STIR app is going to be fantastic and being able to minimise that time. There's going to be online coaching and, and coaching through videos that are integrated within the tool as well. And we hope that that component of this app will help broader dissemination of the app. So it's not only going to be able to be used from occupational health and safety practitioners that have a background in, in undertaking investigations, but it'll be easy enough to understand how to undertake each step uh, for line managers and supervisors, nurse unit managers, for example. As part of this project with WorkSafe Victoria, we're also going to be evaluating the, the financial, social and cultural benefits of application of the or use of the STIR app as well. So very, very happy to answer any questions and um, yeah, about the STIR app, the FIRES implementation and in particular the next steps. It's a really exciting project. It sure is. And thank you so much, Sharon. And so on point, you know, to our theme of uh, looking at that bigger picture through systems thinking. Several questions have come in and I'll go to the first one from Shannon. She says, in using this approach, once you've identified the many factors, how does the hierarchy of control fit with this model? We don't integrate the hierarchy of control within the framework itself, um, the actual steps of the tool, but it is, we do ask that the occupational health and safety officers or those under in charge of the investigation consider that in the development of their action plans. So for example, within the STIR video, uh, which is the coaching video to be integrated within the app, there's reference to hierarchy of controls when developing the action plan itself. We're very happy to be able to share those, those videos and WorkSafe Victoria is currently putting them on their website 
to tell you the truth, I don't think the last step has been uploaded yet onto the WorkSafe Victoria site, but I do know that steps one to four have, and that provides some guidance in terms of using hierarchy of controls in the development of the action plan. Thank you for that resource as well. From Annette, is there consideration of extending the use of FIRES toolkit in the home care sector where work is performed in the home environment and within consumer-directed care model? Absolutely. And what we've come out with at the end of this, this project is essentially an understanding that the, the five, the six steps of the FIRES tool are applicable to, to any setting. It's important being able to develop a classification scheme. And what I mean by classification is step three, where you're identifying the contributing factors, that step is underpinned by an evidence base. And so understanding the context, um, regardless if it's patient handling, workplace violence, we're even developing a tool now for um, undertaking system seeking investigations in work related driving crashes as well. As long as that classification scheme accurately represents the context, um, it can be used in any setting. And they- any type of system. Thank you. A great question next from Kerry. Where contributing factors were outside the organisation's control, have you any examples where information from fires were shared, uh, government regulators, external influences, and, and whether any change resulted or perhaps be tabled for review? We, as part of the implementation of the fires itself, we weren't able to track, monitor those actions that came out of the the implementation trial itself. So that's one of the main considerations in the uh, development of the STIR app and the evaluation side is to monitor that over time. What we did find from the the results that were generated from the VIAS investigation, WorkSafe Victoria used the, that information to in their guidance material to develop new guidance material and to incorporate that within inspector training as well. So we did see the uptake from that more of the local level, but in terms of the health services itself, uh, follow up regard follow up, which was around three months after the implementation. They said that the actions was was still being actioned at that point in time. Um, there was discussions, so there was definitely progress being made. But um, from that and that local level, uh, we needed a, a longer amount of time, which was the purpose of the stir uh, implementation. Thank you. Similar questions from both Zoe and Louise about whether the toolkit will be available for other employers or other industries. Yes, absolutely. We there um, essentially no copyright on this. WorkSafe Victoria has put the fires tool on their website now, and the the videos are accompanying that to provide that that uh, training in in use of the fires. There is this more comprehensive training model for though for occupational health and safety officers, but we needed to be able to provide training that was more feasible and practical as well. So it's on the WorkSafe Victoria website now and you're able to access um, feedback on the videos and how effective the training is, most welcome as well. Thank you. From Alison, do you have any suggestions of how you could make the approach part of ongoing core business of an organisation? Oh, I would love that. And that's essentially the goal that we we have um, for this entire project. I think embedding that systems thinking within workplace culture is the first step. So we need to have these discussions with the regulators and relevant government bodies to ensure that the understanding of systems thinking is first first and foremost in people's thoughts. Because as I was saying, the traditional approach to investigation focuses on these lower levels of the system. Most, a lot of employers are looking for that silver bullet solution to to prevent injuries in the workplace. And that systems thinking goes against that. It's not an easy process. Yeah. Uh, we need to understand, map out all the factors and the relationship between factors across the system to be able to create more of that systemic change. So I think how we actually go about doing that is doing systems thinking training in the first instance. And that's what we've been rolling out across New South Wales um, and more broadly here and, and here in Victoria as well, is doing regular workshops on systems thinking and applying that using this tool. 
Thank you. As you know, our symposium theme is safety by design, building workplace capability. Those words, safety by design, what do they mean to you? I think um, to me, safety by design, I, I, what resonates with me in that is the translation of research into practice. And what is so unique about this tool is that it's underpinned by systems thinking, model and method, um, Rasmussen's um, risk management framework and the Aximap technique. And it's underpinned by those five principles. And I think that really resonates and, and it, it provides an, an effective foundation to be able to best understand incidents um, in an investigation process. Sharon, such an informative presentation and answering so many of questions. Thank you. No, thank you.